Hey there. So this is going to be a, a hopefully quick video about um, intelligently setting up an action target group to round robin your interrupts with Iceboxer. I was talking to somebody about healing in the Iceboxer Discord last night, and I, I happened to ask this person if they um, had an interrupt action target group set up so that you can basically, you know, one character with an interrupt at a time cast that interrupt so that the next time you press the key, the next person in the group casts it. That way, like if you have your interrupts bind, bound to a key that you assist in broadcasts, if you don't round robin that group, or if you even don't have a group and it's just part of like your normal um, DPS thing, um, you will blow through all of your interrupts unnecessarily. Um, I sort of had to learn this the hard way, which maybe everybody does, but um, when I originally started doing a five-man comp, uh, to run dungeons specifically, I had gotten through a lot of the, the you know, one to sixty dungeons. What I would do is I would run the um, the uh, random dungeon, and get a little extra money and loot, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but then I got to Wailing Caverns, where like you know, pretty much right away you run into casters that can just cast over and over again. And up until that point, <laughs> my my five man dungeon experience was going pretty smoothly. And then, like, I wiped on, you know, what should have been an easy fight. And it was because my interrupts were just not set up correctly at all. So, um, I've got a fresh IS Boxer config that we're working with here. Um, and added my characters. Hopefully, you've done this already. Um, and if you haven't, um, hopefully, you know, you can, you can get to this point. Um, I've got two screens here, but I'm just going to set this up. Uh, to use the one so we can see all five. Um, before I picked my layout, I did pick video effects true. Um, you don't need to do that, uh, but I imagine later I might make a video about video effects. And if I'm going to reuse this uh, particular config, uh, I want that enabled. So I'm just going to click next and then we'll just leave that as is. All right. And so I'm going to leave it as is. Um, I'm going to fill these in. I happen to keep my um, in-game keys the same as the IS Boxer keys, which isn't necessary. But I can't, you know what? Uh, just a random thought. I don't think I've ever set this in here, but I'm going to do it. And then. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to set I'm not trying to try not to get too distracted here. I have a tendency to make uh, long videos if I start thinking too much. All right, so I'm just leaving this as is. So here's my character set. I've called it ATG interrupts. Obviously, yours will be named something different. Here are my characters. Okay. So then um, in key maps, you know, you've got all these keys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into custom hotkeys, which... Um, when I, when I play now, I'm using the, uh, Iceboxer Pro system. So all this is very different, but when I first started out, um, I was putting everything pretty much into custom hotkeys. So like, you know, by default, you get all these keys that, um, sort of come with the, the standard config and same thing here. Um, you know, these two, I don't know if this is really virtualized. No, I don't think so. Whatever. I never really mess with these. I left these as is. Um, but when I wanted to do like other keys that I use, um, and, and my 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 setup is is such that I go forward with E, and then you know strafe with S and F, and go backwards with D. And a lot of people use W A S D, but I like to move my hand over one key um, because the nub on F. Um, Helps me keep my hand in the right place. And not really something I need to worry about too much anymore. But when I when I first switched to ESDF instead of WASDF, my muscle memory was on like WASDF or WASD forever, right? And so, you know, restructuring your brain to put like use different keys is <laughs> hard. 
the nub on F on that key, like the physical raise thing helped me move my hand over. So I'm going to set these up like I normally do. You set them up however you want. Maybe you even have some already. So I'm going to do uh, custom hotkeys, go into map keys, right click, say new map key wizard. And I'm going to just do a whole bunch of assistant broadcasts because I'm not going to start off with router on a key broadcast because that's probably not what you did. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this um, sort of with your existing keys if you've already done this step. So do that. And then I'm just going to come up here and just start typing all of my hotkeys that I use on my main bar. All right. So that's all of them. Now, for those of you who are like, why would you use ESDF, like WASD? Well, if you move your hand over one, you get a access to two or one more keys. Um, when you're in WASD, I find the stretch to hit T is kind of far. And um, if you move your hand over, you just get that key in a much more like comfortable stroke. Um, anyway, that's my justification. I've done it like this since the Burning Crusade when I actually first started dual boxing. So that's that. All right. So um, auto assist on. I actually don't do this option. And I'm going to make a different video about that later about how um, through like the dual boxing forms and ice boxer forms, how I've over time figured out how to get auto interact working in a way that sort of like functions between melee and casters. But whatever, I'm going to leave the rest as a default. And this video isn't about interact with target with melee. Okay. So like, let's say you've got, um, you've got an interrupt key on your main cast bar. Now you may be, up, you know, up in here or here, whatever. Like I said, I don't, I don't really mess with these. Um, and I actually have the assist feature turned off on these for when I'm, uh, like for one through equals when I'm doing the ice boxer pro system. Cause those are just all like things that aren't about casting spells that are offensive. Anyway, enough about my keys. So we're in custom hotkeys. Now I would always put my interrupt spell or an interrupt cast sequence macro if you use that, which if you've got a class that can have something that functions as a, like more than one thing that could be an interrupt, um, you might want to think about that because, um, you know, sometimes you really got to blow through them fast and some classes have interrupts that work pretty well. Uh, but are on higher cooldowns. And so if they've got more than one, you probably want to cast sequence. But this isn't about macros. We're just assume you've got a spell on a button bound to a key. In this case, for me, it's V. All right, so for the most part, I'm going to leave this as is. But what I'm going to do is I want this to only go to people who tunes that... Um, have an interrupt that I want them to use. So before we do anything with the button itself, I just want to let you know, this is the one I'm going to work with. We're going to go into action target groups. And by default, you get follower in combat. I usually have a lot more of these. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to make a new one. I'm just going to call it interrupts, right? Call whatever you want. I don't know. <laughs> I think I like the name them so that the name applies to what's going on. All right, so we have that. So then now what do we do? That? There's nobody in it, right? So I'm going to collapse the key map so I can see this character list here. And any characters that have an interrupt that you want to use, these happen to all be paladins. So I'm just going to drag them all in there. But like maybe you have a, you know, a character that doesn't have an interrupt you want to use or you want to use it for something else. You just leave those people out. And if you've got like multiple character sets, you can just fill this in with everyone. Like, you know, on, on my original standard ice boxer, uh, config that I used before I went to the pro system. Um, I had a lot of characters in this, like, you know, most of them. Okay, so we've got our people in our interrupts action target group. So then uh, the next thing we do is go back to key maps. Wherever you've got your hotkey that you're going to use, you want to you know, open it up, click on the first step. And then all you're going to do here is find your target group, your action target group. And so if you want to have this thing just go through everybody in the group one at a time, you would do group of or group all of interrupts, and then you just click this button. 
and save and, and that's it. Um, what you may also want to do is um, have other characters that aren't that don't have interrupts uh, do a spell too. So you don't have to keep this blank on, on their key. Um, and to be fair, I never did this. I just sort of, when I was playing, I was like, yeah, that, that key is, it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not going to use it for any other interrupts. But um, for folks who maybe, you know, don't have as many, uh, aren't comfortable using as many keybinds, you might not want to waste that spot for DPS, for instance. So I'm just going to, you know, full disclosure, actually, I actually haven't done this yet, but I'm going to test it. So we're going to do a new keystroke action. Um, and you know, just same key. So key combination is going to be V. All right, and then the difference here is that we're going to do something fancy, and this is the part I've been tested. So if we use this tilde key, which is like shift and then the key next to the one, and we use parentheses and then just type the name of an action target group, and this tilde key basically means not or not in, whatever you want to think about. So like in theory, if this works, for, char for characters that are in the interrupts group, they'll round robin if anybody's not in the inner inner groups they'll just press the key that's the planning out and then we don't check this all right so i'm going to save that i'm going to export it to ice boxer and then i'm going to start wow up and we will uh we'll see this in action hopefully all right so here we are we are paladins training dummies we have some random mage helping us out here and um what i want to do is I wonder if this game sound is too loud, whatever. What I want to do is, re oh, 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 video effects. Cut. Anyway, um, what I want to do real quick is just uh, show how it would behave if somebody wasn't in the action target group. So you remember before when I filled this in, I put all of my, um, all my paladins in there, but I'm going to remove this one. And I'm going to save. And that's Control S and then Control E. We'll export, okay. And then we can go back to WoW. All right, so now this character is not in interrupts, right? And um, what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, switch it out with, or switch that skill out with something that I can cast more than once, like plus, plus a hammer. All right, so, when I click this, you can see down here, um, maybe in my window scene, there's like no, none of those characters have any uh, new one target. I've got my target overlay with the uh, Guild Wars 2 UI, which is a pretty nice, nice UI. Anyway, I've got that moved over here. So like on those other screens down there, you see that like that space is empty, right? So now when I when I hit V on my keyboard, we should see one at a time the Four paladins in the back cast uh, Hammer of Justice. And then this main paladin, the one I'm controlling, is going to blow through Blessed Hammer charges to the point where the, the last Hammer of Justice is going to go off and cast this again. Unless I can wait a second and do the mall in less than 3.9 seconds. All right, so here we go. V, V, V. The, it looks like we've gotten off. So, now that, you know, those paladins that are in the interrupt group, that's a minute cool. The mage is timing this quite well. This is pretty loud. I hope I don't have to record the sound. Anyway, so you can see, like, you know, I just keep casting Blessed Hammer. Now I'm out. And these other, these other tunes, you know, they're cool down 30 seconds. But hopefully you saw it one at a time. Boom, boom, boom. Like, and then boom. There's four. Um, they all just cast it. And that, that's all there is to it, to um, an action target group with a round robin. Um, and you can use this for a lot of other stuff, too. Um, I, I actually will typically uh, put, like, slows in, on B. Um, so, like, let's say if I had a, you know, a DK, it'd be, like, Chains of Ice, or um, I might even, ca like, uh, put make a cast sequence macro so it, Chains vice, then maybe death grips, whatever. Uh, and um, you can you can get pr pretty creative with this. Um, I won't go into anything too advanced, but like it, if you set up your um, 
you know, your key such that maybe you're, uh, you're using uh, cursor sync actions and then maybe like a set view macro. Um, and let's say you have a shaman, like if you had a slow macro, or I'm sorry, a slow action target group, um, you know, you could sync your cursor to like about the middle of the screen and make sure everybody's looking the same direction and then have a shaman, uh, shaman, whatever, drop like an earthbind totem in the center of the screen, more or less, right? Um, those are some of the other things you can do. And, and, you know, it can be nice, like let's say you're running, right? And, um, and maybe you want to drop like, I don't know, four earthbind totems in a row, space them out. Like you can just, because with an action target group that's running around me, it's like boom, 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 just keep hitting that key and they'll do them one at a time. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, I guess if you have questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, um, I will, uh, I will um, link any uh, source videos. Like, I didn't learn this because, I don't know, I'm super smart or whatever. Like, I found other people's work to help me understand how to do this. So um, I'm going to try to dig up whatever I use to figure out how to do this, and I'll share that too just so the original, the original teacher gets a little bit of props. All right. That's it. Thanks.